This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Hi, and welcome back to Pokemon Ecology. Today, we're looking at the Sneasel family line. Fan favorites who got a bit of love in Legends Arceus. As is typical of Weavile, these two stole the poll just as the fossil video's audio finished, so that's why this video is late. The fossils will be late because... that. Anyway, go vote on the next episode, and let's get right into things. Starting off with the hair, Weavile has this headdress structure on both the males and the females that doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose. My guess is that this could be like a lion's mane, but gender inspecific? Or maybe it grows in age and determines which Weavile leads the pack. This is actually how dogs choose pack leaders in real life. This could be why Sneasler instead gets a longer ear. Yes, that's an ear. Sneaslers are solitary, so leader determination is unneeded. As for their skull, their heads are elongated almost how a cat's is, which gives plenty more muscle connection points for bite force, but these Pokemon seem to use their claws to take prey down. Perhaps this is why the shape is lost when they evolve. Aerodynamics do play in here, but I'm no air scientist, so I wouldn't know. Their eyes are large and forward. This is very common in felinids and other predators in real life. Bigger eyes enables better vision, in this case especially better night vision, and forward-facing eyes means they're better able to locate and chase down prey especially when dodging through snowy thickets or on perilous mountainsides, due to the improved depth perception. Now onto the asymmetrical ears. These Pokemon have one longer ear and one shorter ear. Something similar is present in real life animals, owls. Owls have one ear located higher up and a bit further back than the other ear. This helps them triangulate prey sound sources more efficiently. While that may be the case here, funnily enough also for tracking down prey in snow, it may also help when staking out or sleeping during daytime as Sneasels facing opposite directions will have more efficient sound and sight coverage for would-be predators. We can also see that Sneasel's ear is pointed more to the side, while Weavile's is pointed forward. This means that Sneasel is listening all around for possible attackers, while Weavile is specifically targeting prey. Sneasler's ear is twisted, which would inaccurately pick up more noise from all around. Gender difference plays in here. The males have longer feather ears than females, but the normal ear stays the same. This is lost upon evolution into Sneasler, so why could this be? If these Pokemon were specifically selecting for this, then we'd see more ears like Sneasler, so this behavior may have actually been lost, and this is a now moot trait. And finally, in the head, the Sneasel lines have a shiny gem. Are they related to Meowth at all? They also have retractable claws and similar behavior, though the last point means little in the grand scheme of evolution, but they also have a not too dissimilar stance. They may be not too distant relatives. These Pokemon have a light frame with very long limbs. These long legs enable longer strides, but they aren't present in Hisuian Sneasel. This may be due to a rougher, unsettled terrain. The long arms help keep them distance from prey when attacking, and it helps them reach footholds when climbing. On the topic of climbing, their hands and claws are clearly adapted for hooking. This serves two purposes. It helps them cling to rocks when climbing, and it helps keep prey hooked in their grasp. This is especially helpful for sand shrews that may try to escape from them. The toe claws are long, possibly for digging into softer materials for climbing and gripping when running. For Sneasler specifically, it has potent venom in its claws, which is nothing new, other than venom being a mouth thing usually, but there are exceptions to that. Weavile having access to Poison Jab is obviously just for Pokemon battling balance and such, but we'll ignore that and say it may be that Weavile have vestigial glands in their claws that need to be reawakened through teaching. This is sort of a thing in snakes, many snakes have venom that they're incapable of using for one reason or another. Now onto the tail. All four members of the line have three tail feathers, except Hisui and Sneasels are reduced, and Sneasler only has one short one. These tails may be used for balance as well as silent communication of tactics, similar to how dogs and cats show emotions with their tails. I theorize the second half because Sneasler hunts alone, but that's really it. Curiously, Wival does lose one, but another one grows. Why? All the way at the bottom of the body, we have the feet. Sneasel and Weavile have longer feet for possibly digitigrade running like a dog, but Hisui and Sneasel and Sneasler have flatter feet for stability and balance. This makes sense, of course, with Sneasel and Weavile living in flatter tundra or taiga areas, while Sneasler lives in rougher, mountainous terrain. Regarding their behavior, Jetonian Sneasel's Legends Arceus entry states that the personalities are strikingly different. Curiously, Professor Laventon postulates that water and earth can affect Sneasel's body and mind. One may jump to the conclusion that Jotonian Sneasels are this way due to Kanto's pollution, a big plot point brought up in the older manga. 
However, this doesn't track with Sinnoh's Jetonian Sneasel population, and especially not with the Sneasels that we admittedly never see in New Snap, who live on a series of clean remote islands. I think Laventon is just reaching for answers, but I can't blame him for failing at speculative biology in a time where a bustling village looks like this and Pokeballs are made of wood. It's also stated that the species is aggressive and spiteful, but Laventon's claim doesn't really seem to track. As for the nesting habits, we know nothing about them, leading me to believe that they simply have a territory around which they patrol and live. The only exception that comes to mind would be when a Mammo swine is successfully taken down. I imagine they would sleep nearby to eat the whole meal. But they do live in packs. Sneasel and Weavile at least live in packs and communicate through claw markings. Hisui and Sneasel and Sneaseler do not, instead preferring solitary living. The former obviously has the massive advantage of easier and more often successful hunts, leading to plentiful food from the pack but the latter has the advantage of less need to hunt, with one successful hunt being sufficient food for longer. Now the big issue, why did they split? There's almost no chance that Hisui and Sneasel and Sneasler are actually ancestors of Sneasel and Weavile. The evolutionary changes between them are quite drastic, and we don't see anything this dramatic in the real world to my immediate knowledge. What's different from them to now, we see that there are no free roaming mammoth swine in modern Sinnoh, but in Hisui, we do see them. This would give advantage to Sneasler's venom, should it be able to get the chump, but Weavile have been shown to hunt mammoth swine just fine in their packs. People are now present, who may poach the line for their brilliant gems or their strange ear. People would also be competing for the same food sources, which is what caused the decline of much megafauna in real life. Considering we also no longer see Ursa Luna or any members of the Braviary line, I think humans did seriously impact the potential food of the environment. Speaking of, Hisui does seem cooler than modern Sinnoh, but this may be the case is a mystery, but it is relevant. Hisui also seems much rockier, with many more cliffs being present. It's not likely that this was erosion, instead being due to development from people making paths and routes between towns. Developments are obviously an issue, of course, but in relevant locations, human development is notably tame. Snowpoint City is hardly a village, and there's nothing else around it for a good bit of distance. Now how this impacts the family, why would Sneasel evolve away from Venom? Snakes in real life are theorized to have done it because other methods of hunting prey were more efficient. Is this what happened here? Were larger prey like Mammoswine really less frequent, or maybe Pokemon in general grew smaller and more docile, so funding Venom creation was more difficult and not worth it? If that's the case, then it's likely that pack behavior developed as a direct result of them losing this fighting prowess. As stated earlier, I don't really think this is an ancestor of Sneasel being more like an offshoot or a subspecies. Back to a more generalized discussion, what do these guys eat? Obviously, we know that pilot swine and mammoth swine are some of their biggest food sources, but there are other large Pokemon in the area that Sneasler might eat. Two staples of their diet are actually Sandshrew and Vulpix lines, at least for Sneasel and Weavile, namely the colder climate subspecies of each, of course. Unfortunately for Sandshrew, its adaptations happen to be for something other than Weavile, as its rigid icy back prevents it from rolling into a ball for defense. As a result, Weavile can simply overwhelm it and push it over to attack the soft underbelly. Vulpix and Ninetales cloak themselves in blizzards, but Weavile already fight in low visibility conditions, so I doubt that actually helps. Here is a big list of other prey that's possible. These Pokemon appear very frequently alongside Sneasel and Weavile. One interesting one I noticed was Rhyhorn, which may actually be a predator rather than a prey, considering we do see it with fangs, but I don't really have any other evidence than that. In terms of what predates them, the only thing I could really drum up would be humans poaching them for the gem on their head, or perhaps acting as prey to carnivorous or omnivorous prey of their own that actually wins in a fight, or maybe snags a sneasel left behind or injured from a fight, in the same way that might happen with big cats in real life, and that does seem to be the only human interaction. Again, the species really tends to stay away from developments, and aside from the astray hiker that they may attack, they don't really have much meat on them to make it worth hunting them, so it would just be down to poaching the gem or maybe the feathers. So that was the Sneasel family. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to vote in the poll. Also, thanks to Dealer888, and a big thanks to Soupcan for donating. You guys fund my editor and I, and help push us to working on these bi-weekly or even weekly. Seriously, thank you so much, you have no clue how much this means. See you at the end of February with the next video. Later.